Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson. And I'm Tracy Woodrum. Thanks for joining me again, Tracy. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. I love being here. Great. It was a hectic, busy weekend. What uh, what occupied the bulk of your weekend? Oh, the bulk of it? Uh, I, you know, I had a number of different things that I was doing this weekend, but the highlight would probably be going to the Jubilee. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. that's a long time like Orient tradition that yep. uh, came back this past weekend. We'll have some video in a little bit of that. Um, unfortunately, the weather sort of cut into their foot traffic a little bit. We had rains all day Friday, yeah, and then uh, had it might have been over though by the time those thunderstorms rolled in on Sunday. But uh, while I was there, they had some good traffic. So yeah, there was great traffic when I was down there. I, I went down Saturday evening, so mm -hmm. and the the rain had cleared up, and it was actually a really nice nice yeah. evening. So good band is that the night? Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, Johnny doesn't know or Scotty doesn't know. Some, something like that. I don't exactly remember their name, but it was like 90s music. It was yeah. really good crowd. The, the You know, yeah, everybody in the dancing. crowd loved them. I was dancing. I was out there dancing. It was That's a lot awesome. of fun. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just before we went live, we were talking about how we lost power multiple times. Yes. Uh, <laughs> hopefully uh, you got yours back. It's, uh, it's back on now. It's back yeah. on. And I think all the food is okay. I mean, all the frozen <laughs> stuff seemed to stay frozen. I did have to take everything out of the refrigerator, put it in coolers with oh. ice but I, I think it's all good I guess yeah. we'll find out soon enough I've been eating some of the food so yeah, that's what you, gotta eat the ice cream right yeah mine mine went out four or five times in a row it'd go out come back on go out come back on but after like the fifth time it came on and it stayed on so, okay yeah see yeah. I, mine went in the opposite direction after that <laughs> last time it it just stayed off so uh, you know I said I gotta I gotta put like a flashlight somewhere where I can find it in the dark because yeah. when the power went out uh, in my kitchen, it was just pitch black. And I'm like, where did I put that flashlight? And I didn't have my phone <laughs> on me, so I couldn't find my phone either. So yeah. m let that be a lesson yeah. to you. Put a flashlight somewhere uh, where you know where it's going to be when your power goes out. I made myself a note. I need to make my power outage survival <laughs> kit because I was looking all over. Somehow over the years, all the flashlights in my house have disappeared. So I don't know if some have gone off to college or, you know, over the years they stopped working and so I found one, but uh, when it, it didn't turn on, and so in the dark, I'm trying to un, you know open it up to put a battery in, and I could feel like the battery acid. So I said, "Yay, we're gonna <laughs> wash my hands, and we'll just I have some candles." So yeah. I remember coming yeah. home late from work one night, and the power had gone out. So my my place was pitch black, and I literally had to crawl on my hands and knees. And I just went into my bedroom, went into my bed, laid my bed until power came back up. Yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, that's. I mean, what can you? Once I got all the food transferred to the coolers and then the ice, I was like, well, yeah. I guess I'm gonna get gonna some do? extra sleep tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> Living like the Amish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something else that uh, families had. Uh, you know, the first day of summer was last week. Tuesday was it? Last week. Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday was the it? summer solstice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So Wednesday yeah. was the first day of summer, and so Orion Township kind of tries to time their summer sizzle event with the first day of summer. And so right here at the Orient Center, uh, they occupy that space out behind the Orient Center. And boy, did they have a great turnout. Uh, there's Alicia, Alicia blowing the bubbles. Uh, just some great photo ops yes. right there. <laughs> and yeah, so families come from all over. And the amazing thing is everything that you see in these video clips was free to the public. They didn't have to pay anything. Oh, that's nice. Parking was free, uh, popcorn, cotton candy, even hot dogs and lemonade. Wow. Uh, there were games and uh, balloons, face painting. Um, the cool story about this, well, first of all, it, uh, it originated around the time of like 2008, 2009, when uh, the country went through that recession. Mm -hmm. And uh, Matt Gibb, who was the township supervisor at the time, he wanted to do sort of a community picnic just to kind of raise the spirits of Orion residents. Well, that picnic, which originally took place at Civic Center Park, uh, has evolved into the summer sizzle, which now takes place on the grounds of the Orion Center. And it almost went away a few years ago due to budget concerns and mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff. But the First Baptist Church stepped in, and not only do they provide all the volunteers you see there in colorful shirts, mm -hmm. um, but they provide the food and the games and all that stuff. And, wow. and uh, so they kind of saved this event. And uh, there's Guy Lewis with Chautauqua Express. He's there every year, very, very talented 
individual. And of course, Orient Center has a nice picnic area that people took advantage of. Uh, by this time next year, hopefully they're going to have their new deck. Oh, we talked yes. about that new yep. deck that's going to be uh, built attached to the Orient Center. So they may incorporate that into the summer sizzle. But a uh, great family-friendly event that I think uh, township residents look forward to. Yeah, I think so as well. That looks like a great event. Yeah. and. Um, yeah, and who doesn't love free, free food? <laughs> I know. I had to get a hot dog. They yeah. smelled so good. I put my equipment well, yeah. away. I was like, i got to get a hot dog. Can't pass up a good hot dog. That's right. <laughs> also, another thing that kept me busy uh, this weekend is on Sunday, uh, Orion Township hosted their second annual kickball tournament called Kicking for a Cause. And it's a fundraiser for Miracle Field, which is an absolute gem here in the community. Uh, Orient Township put together a team. They challenged uh, five other teams in this kickball tournament that took place at Friendship Park. Uh, there's Chelsea with a little bunt. She drove in the very first run, which happened to be scored by Township Supervisor Chris Barnett. Uh, unfortunately, the Township team did not advance to the championship game. Okay. Uh, his arch rival and nemesis, <laughs> his brother, Brian Barnett, Brian. who happens to be the mayor of Rochester Hills, his team advanced and went up against Springfield Township. Okay. Um, and it was just a route. Rochester Hills, there's a home run that you see there that was uh, scored by one of their staff, which is named Nathan Mueller, scored the first home run. And he forgot to run the bases. They had to remind him to run the bases. <laughs> you still uh, have to run the bases. And then I think it was the very next inning, firefighter Cody Moresh. Uh, watch this one. He just sends this over the fence. Wow. And it is gone. Two <laughs> runs scored. Uh, Rochester Hills ends up winning the championship game eight to nothing. Wow. Uh, talking to Brian, I think he said throughout the entire tournament, his team only allowed two runs. Wow. They just dominated. They were practicing. I, well, I, it sounds I like asked, they were practicing. Did they the winter event. in yeah. Lakeland with the Tigers <laughs> where they can go through spring yeah. training because they absolutely dominated? Uh, first prize was $5,000 for the charity of their choice. There was a second place prize and then a best team spirit prize. I asked Brian what they were going to do with their winnings because last year when they won, they donated it back to Miracle Field. Uh, but what he told me this year is that uh, one of their planning directors, Sarah, at uh, Rochester Hills, her husband passed away just about a month ago, mm -hmm. and her family's had to set up a GoFundMe account uh, to benefit their children and stuff. So that $5,000 winnings is going to go to uh, Sarah and her family, which I thought was really nice. Yeah. Uh, Miracle Field, uh, I was told, raised about $3,000 at the event. So the money raised from that event goes to upkeep and care of Miracle Field, which if you haven't been there, it's just amazing. We're, kids with special needs can uh, play com mm -hmm. competitive ball, right. uh, baseball, softball. Kids and, and uh, adults. No obstacles. Yeah. Kids and adults. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, have, yeah, yeah. Yep, their games so, and um, leagues played there. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's a car show coming up in a month or so that's going to be raising money for Miracle Field, too. And it's going to be taking place at Miracle Field oh. on, uh, at Friendship Park. So, so yeah, That's people nice. coming you together. Get to check help it out as it. you're supporting it. Yeah, so. it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, now you mentioned uh, Jubilee uh, a mm -hmm. moment ago. Like I said, it's it's one of Lake Orion's biggest traditions. Long, I think more than 50 years, it's been taking place in downtown Lake Orion. Yeah. Usually, traditionally, it's been around the Fourth of July holiday. Uh, they moved it up a little bit, um, but people come from all over and. Uh, I say in this piece that it's kind of a reunion of sorts for Lake Orion residents to come back and get together during Jubilee. So yeah. uh, I was there on Saturday shooting video and put together this piece to look back on the Lake Orion Lions Club Jubilee. Beginning on Thursday, June 22nd, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic for the Lake Orion Lions Club's annual Jubilee. Skirbeck Entertainment Group returned once again to set up the rides, games, and carnival food that Lake Orion residents have come to enjoy year after year. The Lions Club set up the beer tent in the parking lot near Children's Park, where partygoers danced to music provided by Full Tilt on Friday and Scotty Doesn't Know on Saturday. The Jubilee is the Lions Club's largest fundraiser of the year and gives longtime residents a reason to reunite every summer. Oh yeah, it brings a lot of people together. You see people that, you know, you, 
we start talking about you know, the old days in Oregon and these I listened to so many conversations in the beer tent last night and it, it's it is really fun seeing people you don't see very often and they just happen to be coincidentally in town for Jubilee. The Jubilee has been a Lake Orion tradition for more than 50 years. In 2010, it moved to Canterbury Village due to road construction in the downtown area, but it returned in 2014 to record crowds. In 2020, the event was canceled due to the COVID pandemic, but it came back in 2021, and now it's bigger and better than ever. Well, what this means is the money that we raise for the Jubilee is what takes it through the year. So it will help us provide the scholarships for the, the high school kids. It'll help us do the Christmas baskets in December. It's our operating fund that we can make it through the year. So all of the uh, money, especially this Jubilee money, is what gives us the background to continue our service throughout, throughout the year. But this, if we didn't have the Jubilee money, we, we would never, we would not be able to complete our mission. So in order that we, um, you know, there was some, some concern whether we were going to have the Jubilee this year and in previous years because of COVID. So when, when we get the Jubilee approved and we know that we're going to have that capital to get us through year and provide to the community, whatever the needs might be, it's, it's almost like a sigh of relief. Okay, we can continue our mission. And welcome back. And as you can see, we had a quick change and have some guests joining us here on stage to talk about the Lake Point Veterans Barbecue and Picnic, which is coming up. Uh, first of all, let's start off with introductions. Introduce yourself and work your way down. Thank you. Uh, I'm Bob Tenbosch. I'm the Veterans Ministry Leader. Rob Longo. I'm the Chaplain for the Veterans Ministry. Uh, Jim Greco, Director of Marketing and Sales. So let's start with the veterans ministry. What are the origins of the, the ministry? We started about 15 years ago. Uh, there were three of us, myself, um, Dave Trailer, who was an Army veteran, Vietnam, uh, and uh, at that time, Captain uh, Karen Finch. Uh, the three of us started a, an idea of trying to do something for veterans, uh, primarily uh, in the Lake Orion, Oxford area. Um, we thought it would be kind of cool to just have a picnic, see how that goes. Uh, and we did. And uh, it was uh, my idea to probably to come uh, invite veterans from homeless shelters in the Detroit area. Oh, wow. So we found one, uh, the Michigan Veterans Foundation. Uh, we asked them to come. They did. There were about 30, 40 of them. And there was about 20 of us, so about 50, 60 people. I think we had more volunteers than we had veterans. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and frankly, I thought this is not going to work out too well. <laughs> uh, but uh, after the picnic, I inquired with two of the vets that we invited <laughs> from Detroit uh, how they liked it, and they absolutely loved it. They were just uh, just so thankful that we did something for them. Mm. So that kind of was the inspiration of doing something for veterans in our area. Um, as you can probably imagine, uh, PTSD has its toll on many of veterans, and the, uh, the issue of that is just, just staggering. Over 19 million veterans uh, have PTSD. Uh -huh. uh, in Michigan alone, there's probably 118,000 disabled vets, uh, and <clears throat> in 2020, there were more than 6,100 veteran suicides, hmm. uh, which we, you know, it's just heart-wrenching to even hear something like that, but the bottom line is there's no one organization that can handle or even manage all of those elements, PTSD, homelessness, suicide rate, uh, loss of jobs, uh, financial situation. So we've taken it upon ourselves to try to help in some manner, some way to do that. Hmm. Yeah, just hearing those two words together, homeless and veterans, it's just inexcusable, yeah, it's isn't horrible. it? Yes. Those two words should not go together. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about what happens at the picnic. What, what would someone experience uh, at the picnic? Uh, it's a fun event. It's mm -hmm. a family event. Um, it's free to mm -hmm. veterans and their family. Um, we, we literally have uh, about 100 volunteers that uh, put food together uh, in accordance to the Oakland County uh, uh, 
Department the of Health. Health Department, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we have a, a, a live DJ. Uh, we have a live band, the 2XL Band, which is an outstanding band. Mm -hmm. We have games for them to play. We uh, issue free T-shirts to vets that attend, uh, and we just give them love and hope and uh, just a good time, just to have a you know just to have a fun day for their event for one time. Where is this year's picnic taking place? It's going to be on the grounds of Lake Point Community Church, which is on 1550 Drainer Road. Uh, we are on 30 acres of lakefront property, so it's a gorgeous property. Mm. Um, but this year uh, we're doing something a little bit different uh, in that as uh, we are a, uh, a ministry that is self-sufficient. We, we don't ask for money, so we, we ask for donations and if you don't mind I'd like Jim to maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, what we're doing, um, we have a t kind of a tiered system um, that worked well for us in our Bolarama which is a fundraising event that we do to raise money so that we can have the picnic. Uh, it's kind of, it's silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. It's a way of uh, vendors, businesses, people can donate um, uh, 200, 600, uh, 1200, and $1,400 are the donation sizes. Um, and what we do is we recognize them for helping us with plaques, banners, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, they definitely can come to the event, um, but that's what we're. That's what I try and do is reach out to the community and all different communities mm -hmm. to get sponsors because um, it's for the vets. Yeah, and um, we've been doing pretty good with it. Um, this tiered system was the first thing we've. It's a new thing that we did this year, and we broke a, a lot of records raising some money, which was really good. But like Bob said, we're self-sufficient. Um, we're not funded by anybody except people that want to help vets. And that's what we're asking. We want to help vets. Uh, these two gentlemen are vets. I'm the son of a Marine Corps veteran. Um, but the passion is there. Oh. And uh, we'll do whatever it takes to help the vets. Uh, we enjoy it. Um, and, and again, if people want to find out more, they can contact Bob through our ministry and then um, we can get with them and talk to them about their business and how we can actually help advertise for them because they want to help us, mm -hmm. we want to help them too. Uh, here locally we have VFW, we have the American Legion. Do you work closely with them at all? Very close. I'm a member of the VFW Post 334, lifetime yeah. member of VFW. Uh, yes, and uh, they will be the honor guard uh, gotcha. at opening ceremony. Uh, we also work closely with Lake Orion and Vets and also the Oxford AMVETS. Uh, we are uh, also uh, working closely with the Oakland County Vietnam Veterans of America. So yes, uh, as a matter of fact, they will have, uh, they'll be represented at tables uh, at the picnic for information, along with the VA, uh, along with um, Project Brotherhood, which is uh, a suicide prevention uh, group. Uh, the, um, <clears throat> the Oakland County Community College has a student veterans group that will be there. Um, the um, yeah, there, there's several different uh, groups that will be there representing their advocacy for veterans and veteran support. Great. Yeah. Now, obviously, we're going to help spread the word on the picnic. If someone were to see this or uh, see it, or, uh, any promotions, how would, do they reach out? How do they say, hey, I want to come to this picnic? How, what path would they take? Two words. Mm -hmm. Show up. <laughs> it's free. Uh, like I said, we have 30 acres. We could hold a thousand people on our ground. So just just show up. If you're a vet, you're going to get a free T-shirt. Your family will get fed, mm -hmm. uh, and that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, I'd like to expound on the homeless vets, if I will. Uh, sure. uh, we have started with one homeless shelter. These are sanctioned homeless shelters. Uh, we've gone up to now four, and we've just added uh, another group. Uh, they're not homeless, but it's uh, an organization called Michigan Homes for Veterans out of Chesterfield Township. Uh, and we're excited to, uh, to have them come uh, to the event as well. That's fantastic. Now, what else do you do year-round? Uh, I know you focus your efforts on the picnic, but uh, talk about uh, the rest of the year. What does the ministry do to help vets throughout the year? 
Well, I'm blessed to have a chaplain that uh, has a heart of gold that uh, likes to talk to people, and I'd like for our, our chaplain, Rob, to discuss a little bit about what you do and how you get vets to get involved. Thank you, Bob. Before I speak on that, I would just like to say personally from all of us, thank you very much for yes. what you're doing. Oh, you're putting you. the word out. The community is knowing about it now, and as much as we could say or, or do for them, we need people like you in your facility and uh, just to broadcast cast this and where whoever hears you. So the more people that hear and see what you're doing will help our ministry out as well. Um, I have a thing, it's first I serve God first, I serve others second, and I serve myself last. So we're, we're servants. So what we need to do, and what I always do, is I just go out in the community. Um, there's several instances. I went to a Rite Aid pharmacy to get some things, and there was a gentleman sitting there with his wife, and I noticed a cap that he's got on. And I always wear a cap when I go out because it opens up dialogue. Um, you could, you know, where have you been? What did you do? What, you know, what year did you serve? And, and then we were able to invite him into this picnic. And at uh, the end of the year, we have a Veterans Appreciation Dinner also. Yeah. So um, I, s I was talking to him, and then I just thanked him for his service, and I walked out, and I said, what am I doing? i got to go back and, and, and give him a flyer. And also I gave him a cross, a disciple's cross. Next time, uh, I was there several other day days after that, I was walking out, and the gentleman was following me, and I have a couple old cars, and he just walked right by me, walked right to the car, and he's looking around, and... I said, do you want to open the door? You could look inside. And he said, yeah. And he said, oh, I see you're a veteran. And he says, I am also. So it, it opens up uh, the dialogue. And I spoke to him as I was able to give him a flyer and talk to him and invite him to the picnic. Uh, I also belong to a, a group up in the pier called the Geezer Brigade, just a bunch of old guys from the Vietnam era. And later, there's two gentlemen there that are 95 years old. Wow. And they join us every Wednesday for breakfast. And just the camaraderie, and there was um, four or five police officers, uh, state police officers that were there, and I chatted with them, and I was going to hand them a flyer and a cross, and I talked to the guy, do you have anybody, uh, you, does anybody serve? And he said, no, but our commander did. So I gave him a cross, and I gave him a, a flyer also to invite him and his family. Mm -hmm. So every opportunity uh, that you get, we need to speak up and to speak out about what we're doing and we're doing for the vets when we came home. Um, nobody liked us too much. We had a, a bad rapport with the people. And, but now during Desert Storm and things like that, now people are starting to recognize oh, the sure. veterans and what they've done for this country and what they've sacrificed, right? It's, you know, all gave some, but some gave all. Yeah. And that was their lives and their families and everything else. Yeah, we have that beautiful memorial here in Lake Orion. Yes. And uh, like you said, times have changed. Uh, people come to that memorial on Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and all that stuff to, to honor those who yes. serve. So I'm, I'm glad that you've witnessed this change of heart from uh, Americans. Yeah, so, it, it's, yeah, it's starting. And I also uh, visit people in hospitals and nursing homes and it was a privilege to go to the American House. A friend of mine uh, works there, and there's several veterans there, and I've, I've got a chance to meet a guy that's 98 years old, and he you know, landed on uh, Omaha Beach, and he showed me some of his medals and uh, some of the shrapnel that he took off of his body and, and his, his uniform, and just to sit there and listen to their stories and pray over them, and just, it's, it, it's a blessing. Yeah. It really is. You know, I've always been told that veterans uh, tend to be reserved and keep their stories to themselves. But I think yeah. one of the services that you provide is when they see the hat and know mm -hmm. that you've had similar experiences, that encourages them to open up. And I would imagine when they finally do open up, that's got to be therapeutic for them. Oh, it, it is. I mean, talking about your, you know, nobody really likes to talk about war, right? But when they see a fellow veteran or whatever, it, it just, the, the camaraderie, you know, you just come close together, like being brothers or sisters, and, and um, it's just a, an opportunity uh, presented by God. It's not a coincidence, it's a god sentence that brings us together and able to share things and bring hope and kindness and just, there's a lot going on within a few minutes that yeah, yeah. you have. One of the uh, beauty of the picnic is that uh, we've gone from 30 to 50 now to uh, over 
300 to 400. Wow, yeah. And uh, it's just, uh, it's heartwarming to see the vets sitting around tables eating and uh, being a Navy guy, we, we call it sea stories. You know, they're just telling their things and their experiences, but I'm sure the Army guys and the Marine guys have uh, many stories to tell. And, and it's just wonderful for them to see them talk and open up and, and just have a good time listening to great music and having some fantastic food. Do those uh, playful rivalries still take place? Of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, I mean, we, you know, we have, to, we, we have to take care of the Marines. So yeah. they, they, they get lost if we, the Navy, don't tell them where to go. You know, when, when you when you do that, we could, we could pick on each other, but don't pick on either one of us, anyone. You know, then we yeah, all yeah. stand together, and that's the way it is. It's the brotherhood. You know, you share something with someone on a battlefield that you can't share anywhere else. Yeah. What are the most pressing needs that you're identifying uh, among the veteran community? Jim, do you want to address that? Well, you know, there's uh, the thing with suicide, that, that, that's a tough thing. Mm -hmm. And it's tough not just on the person that took their life, but it affects the whole family, it affects everybody they know. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess what we're doing is when we show the love at a picnic, because like Bob said, we get three, four, five hundred people and their families coming. Um, and then we have the bowl of rama which is our big fundraiser. We're showing a lot of love to people. The dinner that we're going to have the day before Veterans Day, <coughs> excuse me, is because a lot of vets can get a dinner at a restaurant. A lot of restaurants do that. Mm -hmm. cool. What we're doing, and uh, with the help of many others, we're going to cook a spectacular dinner for our third year in a row. Uh, we're making my mom's meatloaf, which <laughs> has been requested. Don't change a thing. <coughs> but it's showing the love and respect for what these people, yeah. these men and women have done. Um, it's just a way of reaching out. And, and Bob and Rob here, when we find a, a veteran that's in need of something, oh, gee, uh, he had a heart attack. He can't do any work. These guys, we'll get a group together, mm -hmm. go over there, cut his grass, take care of whatever it takes because mm -hmm. they gave all right yeah. and, and they continue and not being a veteran i still have a lot of passion for helping the vets because my dad was a marine and um it's it's just showing god's love to people yes it the, becomes infectious sorry Jim. the um i think the important aspect of what we do is uh, the money that we raise and we receive uh, we pay it forward mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And that uh, is obviously in need. Like I mentioned before, no one organization has the wherewithal to handle all of the situations. So I think it's uh, it's incumbent on in us to give what we can to various organizations that they need the money, they support mm -hmm. their specific needs for their veterans. Well. So, so how are you getting the word out? How are you letting these vets know that uh, you're there for them? What, do you have a website, social media presence? Yes, we have a social media. It's called uh, WLOV. We love our vets. Uh, we have flyers. Uh, we have uh, save the date cards that we pass out. Um, and uh, if anybody needs more information, they can contact me at Bob at Tenbosch, and that's one word, T-E-N, like 10, B-O-S-C-H, dot com. And I'll get to the, the literature or whatever is the detail that you need. That's awesome. Now you mentioned you have a, a Bolorama uh, fundraiser. Um, how can people help support your cause throughout the year? Well, that's that's where we get sponsors. Um, the the bowling alley has 32 lanes, and we sell lane sponsorships from businesses. Um, the tiered system worked really well this year. Uh, I mean, even last year. We got 42 lane sponsors, and there's only 32 lanes. <laughs> That's where, and when you say, how do we get out there? Bob or Rob does what he does. Bob does what he does. I do what I do. We're out. I oh, mean, no. in our daily lives, mm -hmm. whatever I'm doing, if I can touch someone, talk to somebody about what we do, we, we live it, we breathe it, mm -hmm. and we express it. So the businesses that, that want to help, are getting some really good advertising uh, because the way we do it is for certain donations we'll make a yard sign with their business logo on it uh, another tier you get the sign and a plaque okay you go even further we make a banner 
a three by six foot banner with whatever your company, whatever you want on it, we'll make that for you. Just saying thanks for helping support us. And so, it's displayed at every event. Yes, yeah. and we display it at all of our, our events. Um, and we're always looking for new sponsors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it can be a car dealership, restaurants, uh, it doesn't matter. And just private people. Um, yeah. we, we take donations from anywhere because like Bob said, we're, we're, we're now self-sufficient. We don't get anything other mm -hmm. than donations. Um, it's kind of a year-round thing for me. Um, I'm not retired, but I spend a lot of my free time doing it because I love what we do and what we represent. We're just yeah. helping vets. I mean, yeah. not enough people do. So I'm out there looking for the people that say, I want to help vets. I'll give you the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And expanding on that, it's just we all need groceries. You go to the grocery store. If you see someone, you know, that has a veteran's hat on, you go up there and thank them for their service. There's an opportunity to invite them to our church, you know, uh, just to attend. But this Bolarama is an extremely important effect on, on us and what it does. Um, the church is, has uh, money that they allocate to uh, the ministries and we used to receive that every year but we decided to be just self-reliant and we're raising that money and with that money that we raise we tithe back 10 percent to our church oh. right and that's what you have to do is give back you know, and god will you know just give you an overabundance of whatever's necessary uh, Joe, with your permission, if we could come back, uh, maybe in February when uh, we'd be planning our Bolarama, which oh, will sure. probably be March, April time frame, I'd, we'd yeah. greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, oh, definitely. We'd uh, love to have you back. Yeah. We'd love to yeah. come or even back, before yeah. the dinner in November. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> so we might good. see you in September. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our door is open. Okay. We're a nonprofit organization. Okay. We like to help our fellow nonprofit organizations in the community. Yeah. So Thank we're you. really glad to help you get the word out. Just to recap, uh, the picnic and barbecue will be taking place on Saturday, July 29th, just a little over a month away at Lake Point Church on West Strainer Road in Oxford yes. uh, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> well, you could join us as well. We'd All right. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. We'd love you to have and your staff. Crew. Come on. I want to try know. that meatloaf. Today. Yeah. <laughs> that, November 10th. It's a Friday. Um, and just to touch on that real quick is the, the, the picnic is for veterans and their family. It's free. Yep. The veterans dinner that we're going to do, it's for a veteran and a guest. It's free but they have to call and make a reservation. Because mm -hmm. the first year we did it, we fed about 140. Last year was 250, wow. and we might max out at about 3, 350 this year. Yeah. But wow. it's a free thing, but you just gotta call and say, hey, it's Joe and, J and Brenda Smith. I was in the Army, reserved two, two seats for us. Done deal, you're in. Yeah. All right. And that's where we're looking for corporate sponsors for that too. Yes. All right. We'll help get the word out. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining me. Uh, this you. is all new to me. It's great to learn about your organization. And uh, we'll do what we can to help help get the word out. Thanks, Thank you, sir. Thank right. you. God thanks bless you. Thanks for uh, joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I know there are a couple of veterans that uh, play with the North Oakland Concert Band, and they kicked off the Wildwood Concert Series uh, over at the Wildwood Pavilion by Civic Center Park. Um, and so here's a little snippet from the very first concert of the 2023 season. Thank you. 
Do you recognize that tune they played? Guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sitting here tapping my ring. <laughs> I feel like we need to go to, you know. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that was the Indiana Jones theme. And the new Indiana Jones movie is coming out this Friday. It That's, hits I have seen the previews for that. I actually didn't even realize there was a new movie coming out. Yeah. And I saw the preview and I, I had to do a, a double take. I'm so, going in yeah. with low expectations because okay. the last one that came out a number of years ago called The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Okay. When you consider expectations versus okay. delivery. So you set the bar too high yeah. and you came in low. So this well, time you're going to set it low and hopefully it'll ones. come up above. Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. The Last Crusade, those are some of the greatest movies I've ever seen. Yeah. So yeah, my expectations are up here. So I'm looking forward to seeing it, but I'm going in with low expectations. So, yeah. uh, so that was the North Oakland Concert Band. That was, uh, as I'm watching the clip, I realized that was from the Rain Shorten concert some uh weather uh, ended up shortening that concert but uh they got a couple of uh songs in and that's that's a great one the john williams raiders of the lost ark theme uh so yeah um coming up next uh as you may or may not know there's some stuff going on in downtown lake orion where there's a uh, faction that wants to do away with the dda now i don't want to ruffle feathers but i think that Molly and the people at the DDA are doing a great job mm -hmm. and the downtown area has never been more vibrant and bustling Absolutely. with activity. Every time I go down there there's foot traffic and, yeah. and stuff going on and events. I, I think that stems from a lack of knowledge and understanding about what the DDA does, you know, how they get their funding, like there's just a lot of misinformation out there and it's if you knew the facts, if you yeah. know the facts, you'd have a different view. Well, it's funny yeah. you should say that because what we do here is help get that information out. So we invited Molly Lalone, Lalone, the DDA director, to come into our studio and talk about what the DDA does and how they're funded. So here's a little excerpt from her interview that she just did recently right here at Owen TV. Right after the holiday, um, the J July 4th holiday, we start the Lake Orion Live music concerts. And these, um, this year, it's going to be local talent, and we have a lot of excellent talent, local talent. Um, this has all been um, arranged and organized by 20 Front Street. I want to thank oh. Alan and the team at 20 Front Street for arranging that for us. That's a big um, job, right? To, to bring everybody job. together, get everyone scheduled, and mm -hmm. you know, bringing in the talent mm -hmm. that you know everybody's going to enjoy listening to. And the nice thing is, they make it look very easy. Yes, they do. You and I <laughs> both know that it is not easy. Right. Right. <laughs> it's no. not easy to find a good talent and to know that you're getting um, the best entertainers that you can get. But Twenty Front Street is aware of yes. who are the best, and they make sure that we get the best. They are phenomenal when mm -hmm. it comes to music and talent, mm -hmm. and there's a reason that that venue mm -hmm. is so successful, and mm -hmm. we are very lucky to have them in downtown and mm -hmm. to be helping with our local events as well. Yes, yes so. absolutely, I agree. Um, so that is going to be every Wednesday through August 30th, and it will be in Children's Park at 6.30. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. All right. um, and so you can bring your bring your chairs. Sometimes people will mm -hmm. grab something to eat or drink and mm -hmm. have a seat and uh, you know sit and enjoy the music on a nice yes. summer night. Yes. All right. So moving right along, we've got in July. There's also the Lake Orion High School All Classes Reunion Pre Party. Mm -hmm. This is sponsored by the American Legion. Oh. Um, and we put a banner out there. Congratulations, high school grads. Yeah. <laughs> but the purpose of this one really is if you are a high school grad from Lake Orion and you're coming into town, well come enjoy the downtown. Yeah. Just come and enjoy it. It's changed a lot. Depending yes. on when you graduated, yes. the downtown has really changed a lot in uh, well especially the last 10, 12 years. It's mm -hmm. it's really changed. So okay, yeah. so you're you're hosting a party for well, the American Legion's hosting the a American party. American Legion. Oh, okay. But so this guess is what? Legion. Our town is ready for that party. Yes. We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready for all of come you to come and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes, and then we uh, finish off the end of July with the Cops and Kids Car Show. Okay. This is sponsored by Galling GMC. 
um, but it is a specifically it's a fundraiser for the Kids and Cops program that yeah. our lo local Lake Orion Police Department runs. Yeah, and I love that program. I do too I because do too. it's um, in our media. There's so much um, fear about the our, about our police and. The Kids and Cops program kind of starts early and, and changes that narrative. Yeah. I mean, our cops are our friends here in Lake Orion, and they really work hard for the community to keep it safe. They do. Um, yeah. I was talking to the interim police chief, um, Todd Stanfield, yep. and we were talking about all of the summer events and how, you know, what was going to happen for our businesses. So the businesses would be um, up to date on what was going on. And because I've been hearing questions, I definitely said, hey, um, this happened in this community, this happened in this community, tell me you know, what the police department does. Right. So one of them was, um, there was a you know, disturbance um, at a local festival and they actually had to close down the entire festival because you know, there was something going on. Right. And, and I asked him about that one and he said, Molly, that doesn't really happen in Lake Orion because we have planes closed, policemen, and uniformed policemen all over the place, and we're on top of it before it becomes an issue. Yeah. And that, would, that to me, okay, thank you, police department. Yes. <laughs> that's huge. That's such a big, that's, that gave me a lot of peace of mind that we can invite people and that we know they're going to be safe and that our police department is working the hardest they can to make sure. So this event, the, the Kids and Cops and Kids Car Show, it's all about them. Yeah, um, I, I do love it, and I, I can't say enough good things about our Lake Orion Police Department. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons that I moved to and live in the village is because we have the Lake Orion Police Department that mm -hmm. is taking care of things. And many of the, the police officers, they're our neighbors as well. Mm -hmm. So they care about you know our community mm -hmm. and you know each of us. Um, all the more so yes, yes. so yeah. this is a great event and there's there is so much that they do for our community mm -hmm. and for our kids and so um, yeah and shout out to Galling G GMC yeah. they do um, they're very entrenched in the community and make sure that um, the events that they're involved with are stellar yes So there you go, uh, the DDA doing great things in downtown Lake Orion. Like I said, uh, it's just fun hanging out in downtown Lake Orion. There's it just is. so much going on. It, it is. It's grown and changed so much over the years, yeah. and a lot of that is attributed to the work that the DDA has done for yeah. the downtown. Yeah, I think I've, I've seen only one vacancy that I'm aware of, and that's the space that was occupied by Simply Marcella. They moved into a different location, mm -hmm. and I don't think they filled their previous location yet, but uh, there's hardly any vacancies in downtown right? like Orion. And downtown vacancy. is bustling. If, I mean, I live walking distance just a few blocks away, and, you know, even weeknights, it used to be like, okay, you know, on a Saturday night, Friday night, you might see, you know, a number of cars, but now the like, downtown is bustling. It starts at least midweek. Once every, once all the restaurants and everybody are open for the week, it's yeah. uh, it's fun. It's just got this great positive energy throughout the downtown. Definitely. Yeah, it's great to see. Uh, next up, uh, just recently I was at uh, Civic Center Park where I met up with some of the staff from Orient Township, mm -hmm. and they are proud to show off their new fitness course. Uh, which looks like one of those courses you would see on Ninja Warrior. Yes. I did not even try to attempt <laughs> that. I would either that hurt myself. That could be myself. a good video segment, right? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> like it's good either I would hurt myself or I would damage the equipment. <laughs> but uh, but we, we met with Jenny Body and Aaron Watley in uh, Civic Center Park, and they're proud to show off their new Ninja Warrior fitness course. here at the Fit Core Extreme. No. Yeah. Fit Core Extreme. Fit Core Extreme. <laughs> Fitness course. Joe, don't use that. No, I'm just kidding. Ages recommended for ages 13 plus. 
This is a great way to test your athletic abilities, or it says challenge your athletic abilities. Do you think you're up for the challenge? Uh, it's very difficult, but it's a fun course. Now, the fitness course here, I know it's been talked about for quite a while. Tell us how it came to be. Yep, so it's all part of our millage campaign uh, that we were working to complete. So part of it was to put outdoor fitness elements throughout the community. Um, and what better way than to have kind of an area consolidated for yep. a whole challenge course. So we have our, we're out at Civic Center Park and we have our uh, kids playground and then our adult playground over here, our young teen playground. So there you um, go. it's a great challenge. We're just checking off the things on the millage list our capital improvement list that the community wanted. So I've, Yeah, I've seen this mentioned in quite a few community surveys, and we actually had a group of Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts bring it up um, to the township as well too. So yeah. it's nice to see that it's actually been built, and I'm ready to get a closer look at it. You want to show it. me around? I do. Uh, one thing on that, we've what? had... We have had a couple of our staff go through it, and okay. so we will be posting Okay. times oh, and see a, a, challenge. a challenge to the community. Mm. See if you can beat some of our staff's times. Oh, I'm excited And then maybe for we'll that. give you a little mm. swag if you can beat it. Okay, so, While well, supplies excited. last. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look. All right, so we are at the quintuple steps right now. What's the point of this obstacle? Uh, I mean, not I think to I fall, can guess. not to fall. So <laughs> not yeah, to fall. Okay. go from one step to the other, however you can make it and get to the end. Okay. We pretend this is lava here, so don't go oh. on the lava. Oh, I like that. I can imagine a few different techniques about going fast or going slow and kind of grabbing onto the top of that. So yep. I can see a couple. The next one's a doozy. All right, let's go see. All right, so we are at the ledge hanger, and I'm not gonna lie, this one does look a little intimidating. Yes. How, how tall is it? Uh, very, very tall. For perspective, I am 6'4", <laughs> so it's tall. It is very tall, and I see it's color-coded there, so it looks like we're at, we have different levels of yep, green, challenging aspects. Yep, green, yellow, and red. Okay. So, how yep. high, what's the highest one you can do? Uh, one where my feet are on the ground. <laughs> I mean, you might be able to reach the yeah, green yeah, I one can there. Reach those, but so yeah, this yeah, is yeah. to test your grip strength, right? Correct. Yep. Man, this looks this looks really challenging. Yep. That'll be a good one. Next right. one's fun too. I'm excited for the next one. Let's go take a look. All right, Aaron, we are at the <laughs> spider block. Tell me what this obstacle is all about. Ah, uh, it is just like the American Ninja Warrior, where you okay. you gotta spread yourself out, kind however like you can doing. do it, work your way across. <laughs> this doesn't seem very efficient, end. though. Yeah, it's not very comfortable either, not like I'll be this. honest. <laughs> no, I don't. feel it right back here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but the object is to get all the way across, and I'm assuming most people would do it like this Correct. or like this. Yep, however you can do it. Definitely, I don't recommend this yeah. at all. <laughs> all right, let's go check out the next one. All right, Aaron. To see the rest <laughs> of those obstacles, you're going to have to go visit Civic Center Park yourself. Uh, good luck to you. I couldn't even attempt any of those. Send us some video. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, oh. uh, I'll bring Tracy out with me with a camera and we'll yeah. have her demonstrate some of those. Oh, obstacles. I thought you were going to have me with the camera. No, you no, demonstrating. No, oh, wait, no. wait. What did I agree to? <laughs> I am not going to be ridiculed on TikTok by you or anyone else. Um, but yeah, this beautiful new uh, addition to Civic Center Park. And they got all kinds of great things happening over there. So. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we're going to sort of wrap things up a little bit by uh, letting people know what is happening in Lake Orion over the next week or so. Uh, so our intern Bethany put together this week's Quick Hits. Hi, and welcome back to ONTV Quick Hit. On Thursday the 29th, Oakland County Parks are teaming up with the Disability Network of Eastern Michigan to host Diverse Ability Days at Independence Oaks in Clarkston. Diverse Ability Days is a series of events featuring many fun, adaptive, and inclusive activities. Come by and enjoy accessible bikes, adaptive archery, adaptive kayaking, boat rides, sports and games, and a hot dog and chip lunch all at the park. This event will run from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Registration is required. To register, visit tinyurl.com slash diverseabilityday. For more information, call 586-268-4160.
Join the community for the 7th Annual Lake Orion American Summer Restaurant Week starting on June 27th and running through July 3rd. Great deals and food options will be available all across Lake Orion, including lunch and dinner. Not all locations may be participating. For more information, you can visit downtownlakeorion.org. Swing by downtown this Thursday night for the annual Lake Orion American Summer Pub Crawl. The crawl will run throughout Lake Orion, covering Baldwin, Downtown, and Lapeer Road. There will be shuttles available, drink and food specials, live entertainment, and more. The crawl will begin at 5 p.m. and carry through until 2 a.m. No registration is required for this event. Coming this Saturday, bring the whole family to the lake to enjoy a fireworks show to celebrate the upcoming Independence Day. The fireworks over Lake Orion will begin at dusk on July 1st. Should it rain, the event will take place on July 2nd. No registration is required, but hurry down because parking fills up fast. Don't forget that there are free concerts at Wildwood Amphitheater on Tuesdays throughout the summer. Coming this Tuesday, Lake Orion High School Band will be performing. Gates open at 6.30 and the performance will take place from 7 to 8.30. Admission is always free for this event. For more information, you can visit orionparks.com or call 248-391-0304. Let's take a look at this week's forecast. Looks like Wednesday and Thursday are both calling for partly cloudy skies, Wednesday with a high of 79 and a low of 56, Thursday with a high of 82 and a low of 61. Friday and Saturday both call for scattered thunderstorms, with Friday reaching a high of 78 and a low of 62, and Saturday having a high of 80 and a low of 59. Saturday looks like it'll be partly cloudy, with a high of 80 and a low of 59. Thanks for watching this week's Quick Hit. We'll see you next week. So this year, for the for the first time in years, there's mm -hmm. not two different fireworks right. shows. Uh, in the past, they've had a fireworks show during the Saturday of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And would you believe, uh, as I was driving up M24, looking for a parking spot to shoot video at Jubilee, I saw families setting up on Saturday, really? not knowing that fireworks were canceled for that were. weekend. Well, they combined, I don't not necessarily say canceled, but yeah. right, they combined to put, do one show together on yeah. the first, so. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so they're gonna have the fireworks this, or next, yeah, this upcoming Saturday yep. is the fireworks show, and I'll be there with my camera. And the okay. night before is flare night, which is mm -hmm. something to see. That's a long time tradition that goes back to uh, the end of World War II to celebrate the end of the war. And so homes all around the lake, uh, Lake Orion, uh, light up flares. It's, it's a spectacle. It's something to see. Yeah, it is. It's so it's uh, really so nice flare night on Friday, fireworks on Saturday. Um, you recently had Brian Burney uh, in the podcast room to talk yes. about uh, the, the Lake Orion American Summer. Yeah, this week is Lake Orion's American Summer. There's restaurant week going on all week, and so different restaurants have specials and just encouraging people to get out and support our local restaurants. And then Thursday, the pub crawl, uh, which is a lot of fun. If you haven't, if you've never attended, it's just, it's very festive. You get out, you wear your red, white, and blue, and go to the different uh, bars and restaurants all across Lake Orion. There's a shuttle that takes you around. And uh, Brian actually uh, let us know that if anybody, if you want to get your lanyard to ride that shuttle and get all through downtown, or not just downtown, but all through Orion Township and Lake Orion, uh, you put in the code Tracy. It's T-R-A-C-Y, and you will get 50% off, so. There you go, she knows people. You heard it here, She's I know a few people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder so. how many people literally crawl during the pub crawl. Do you think there's a few? I have seen some. Yes, <laughs> I have seen some people literally crawl or get to a point where they can no longer crawl. <laughs> but you don't have to get to that point. You can come out. I mean, I, I, my first stop is always dinner. I mm. always, um, you know, Load pick a spot from. and, yeah, get something delicious and then appetizers along the way. So, yeah, yeah there's a... It's a, it's a great go. way to support our local eateries, local restaurants and pubs and things like that. I remember I remember the year they had to cancel it due to COVID and everybody was really upset about mm -hmm. that, but uh, it's back. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, support local business. We're yep. all about Well, that. and even though it was canceled that year, all the, because tickets were already purchased. Mm -hmm. So all the donations went to Love Inc, which oh, we've had Love Inc great. on the program before. And uh, yeah, great local um, organization. So. 
So it, there was a positive, right? That's there, Definitely. That was the positive to not being able to have the event. So. All right. Yeah. So let's hope for good weather for the fireworks on Saturday. If it does happen to rain, they'll move it to the following day on Sunday. But mm -hmm. uh, let's cross our fingers and hope that they're able to pull it off. And I'll be there. Look for me in uh, either Greens Park or Pelton yeah. Point. Uh, looking, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Lots of right. lots of fun and fe festivities, and I'm also going to mark my calendar for that uh, veterans picnic. My dad is Definitely. a Navy vet, and that uh, I loved awesome. that that segment. So yeah, that was great. Thanks mm -hmm. for uh, coming out, and thank you for watching, Tracy. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you next time on Orient Today.